a big wig, dressed to the nines, putting on the dog, all old phrases that refer to the history of fashion. Today on Exploring Nevada, we take you to the Nevada State Museum's Marjorie Russell Clothing and Textile Research Center in Carson City. Here we find a fascinating record of how Nevadans dressed over the past two centuries. Our special guest host today is curator Jan Loverin, who will take us on this colorful journey into our state's fashionable past. Welcome to the center. Today we're going to be talking about getting dressed, something every one of us does every day of our lives, but we're going to look at it from a historic context today. Getting dressed involves different tasks depending upon who you were, when you lived, and what you really did for a living. For instance, in these books here, let's take a look at Queen Elizabeth. This Queen Elizabeth certainly looks different than the Queen Elizabeth today. Or we have here a photo of a 16th century cavalry gentleman. Quite a bit different, not wearing Levi's like we would today. Instead, he's wearing bombasted breeches. Or what if you lived in Africa and you were a Dinka warrior? You would be dressing totally different than any of these. Another interesting silhouette is a 1950s glamour girl. Certainly different skills involved getting her dressed in the morning. And in comparison, another one is a Greek charioteer. He's wearing what we would call a dress. In those days, 2,000 years ago, it was really a tunic. But nonetheless, it's not necessarily the image most of us have in mind when we think of a charioteer. But all of these people are fashionably dressed. All of them have manipulated their body to represent the fashionable ideal of beauty at the time. Fashion has been defined as a process of dressing prevailing among any group of people. And so you can see here that there's wide diversity of getting dressed in the morning. Here at the Margie Russell Center is the storage facility for all the clothing and textiles from the Nevada State Museum, the Nevada Historical Society, the Nevada State Railroad Museum, as well as from the School of Home Economics at UNR. We have focused our collection on primarily 19th and 20th century garments. They include things such as military wear, ceremonial dress, underwear, outerwear, entertainment wear, firefighters' uniforms, fancy things, all different aspects of clothing and textiles. In addition to all the artifacts we have here at the center, we also have a wonderful library. And I'd like to share with you one of these texts which can show some of the variation in silhouette or outline shape. Specifically, I'd like you to look at this page and down in the lower left corner, we can see a very fashionably dressed gentleman. In today's program, we're going to be talking primarily about women, but in this instance, I wanted you to look at him. For this silhouette was rather different. The man was corseted in. He had a powder puff chest sticking out the top of his chest. He wore a cravat and he had very tight breeches. The tight breeches were important because it was fashionable to show off the shapeliness of man's legs. So some men would even pad their calves to get them to be the right shape. To achieve the diversity of dress, we have to look now at the human form. As the human form has been manipulated, adjusted, altered, if you will, to create the fashionable silhouettes that have been popular in prior decades. We are now in the back at the Marjorie Russell Clothing and Textile Research Center where we store all of our co clothing and textiles. And this is where we actually fit the artifacts to the human form. Here we are featuring three different forms. These are all very different, um, but they are from the 19th century. This particular one that I'm going to talk about first is the earliest form. It's from 1860. And if you look at the body shape, which is what I was talking about before, you can see that the bust is quite raised and the waist is very narrow. Actually, if we take a measurement on this waist, the measurement is 20 and 1 quarter inches. This would be for a full-grown woman. This particular silhouette, as with all of them actually, would have been corseted. They would have had their rib cage constricted. And this would have been something that would have been done as a young girl, actually. So their rib cage would have never expanded to the capacity of ours today. 
If we look at this dress form, obviously this is quite a bit larger scale than this one, but I want you to notice here is actually the profile. She also has been corseted in. Her bust line is raised, releasing up at the top, but notice the definition on the derriere. This particular form is from the 1880s and would have been worn with a bustle when it was fashionable for women to have many layers of fabric on their derriere. This particular silhouette was never meant to accentuate the derriere, but rather was a placement, to, a place to put all the drapery of your skirt. And the more drapery you had, the more higher status you were, so therefore you would have wanted a bigger bustle. Our third mannequin right here is quite stunning. <laughs> quite voluptuous is the word. This particular shape is not a natural woman's shape, as none of these were. This particular silhouette is from about 1900. It's called a mono bosom bodice or mono bosom look. And it was the time when it was fashionable for a woman's waist to be compressed and then the corset was very rounded and women would actually stuff this part of their chest to give it a very rounded silhouette. And I think you can see here, this almost creates an S curve. It's very dramatic. The shoulders were back, the chest was extended, the waist nipped in, and then the skirt would flow to the back. As you can see here, we have several different body shapes represented just right here. And this is only within about a 50 year period. You can imagine that getting your body into one of these shapes was quite difficult. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to actually witness a woman restricting her waist, putting on her corset, putting on a crinoline to create the fashionable silhouette of the 1860s. And we're going to see the effort it took to achieve this fashionable silhouette. And coming up next, we'll head out to historic Bowers Mansion in Washoe Valley for a ringside seat on this complicated morning ritual. <laughs>